finished. Hi, my name is Grant Hawks. We're down here in Cayo Cruz, Cuba, hosting a group for the week. Part of saltwater fishing is definitely knowing how to communicate with your guide and understanding boat communication. I wanted to spend a minute covering a few of those details and what will help you have a more successful trip. To start, normally, the guide will hand you the rod, not like so. All you'll want to do is come around the back of the reel, and now you're in a position to be able to take your fly on. Before I start fishing, one of the things that's very important is that we need to strip out enough line to be able to fish. While pulling out line, I find it imperative to pull your line straight out rather than down as it's going to destroy your fly line. Go ahead and strip off all the fly line that you think you're going to need to cast and put that down here on the deck. We call this the deck of the boat. One other thing about the boat that's important is that wherever the boat is pointing, because you can see the boat is pointing here, this is 12 o'clock always. It doesn't matter if I'm turned this direction or this direction, this is 12 o'clock. The significance of that is that the guide will oftentimes make commands to you about where he wants you to cast throughout the day, and they typically use the clock on the boat. So if the guide asks you to cast at 12 o'clock, that would be straight ahead. Oftentimes, the guide's trying to position the boat so that you're casting at 11 o'clock position when they can. That'll assure that you won't cast into the guide while casting at this angle. Back to what I was talking about before, I normally want to pull out all of my fly line and put it down here on the deck. Notice also that when I'm pulling out my fly line, the back of my line is now stacking on the front of my line. When I cast this, oftentimes you'll have a problem because that line will stack on each other and cause a tangle. So before I get to fishing, I typically want to put my line out and then restack my fly line so that I'm putting my back of my line on top with the front line coming on top like so. I'm putting my line down here at the bottom of the boat and if you noticed, I've cleaned out the bottom of the boat area here so that nothing can hook onto my fly line. I'm putting my line down in the bottom of the boat so that the wind doesn't blow the line off the deck of the boat while I'm up here in the front. I'm gonna strip my line in back to about where I wanna cast, which typically is with about eight feet of fly line out of the rod. I will now get my line back in my hand. I will slide my fly back up to my hand and this is what we're going to call the ready position. Fly in hand, 8 to 10 foot of fly line out. So this is the ready position, is if I'm up here fishing, my line's not dragging in the water, I've got it out of the water, and if a fish were to approach, I am now ready to fish. So, for example, if the guide tells me 11 o'clock, the next thing I'm going to do is hope that I get some sort of form of distance. Down here in Cuba, they're typically using the meter system instead of the feet system. So oftentimes what you'll hear a guide say, 11 o'clock, 20 meters. The first thing I want to do is use my fly rod as my indicator to find the fish if I can't see it yet. Remember, when we're saltwater fishing, we're hunting. We're trying to see the fish before we make the cast. So if the guide tells me 11 o'clock, 20 meters, the first thing I'm going to do is point with my fly rod and the guide can say, more left. More left, more left, more left. No, 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 more right, more right. And until I can pick up the fish, he may say further out and I may move my rod. He says, okay, you see it? Now you see it? And you're looking out there, okay, I see the fish. 11 o'clock, 20 meters. I now have my fly in my hand. I'm gonna take my fly and I'm gonna throw it in the water. I'm gonna pick up my line off my hand and I'm gonna make a couple casts, hopefully, and be at about what we call 20 meters. Lay down the fly. When I lay down the fly, immediately I want my fly rod to be low and I'm in my stripping position. Rod is low so that if the fish eats it, it's a direct connection to the fly line. If my rod is up here, you can see my line is loose, and if the fish were to eat it, it would have to pull it three feet before that line went tight. So I'm normally down low and stripping. Now I just talked about stripping. That's one thing I want to establish with my guide before I ever even get to fishing. I typically ask the guide, how would you like for me to strip the fly? It's pretty important. We're trying to imitate either crabs or shrimp. 
So depending on the type of fly that I have, and maybe the species of fish that we're chasing, that strip may vary just a little bit. So if you think about a shrimp when it swims in the water, most of them are gonna swim at about this distance. Whereas a crab, they typically move really slow. They don't have the ability to kick like a shrimp does. So it's a slower strip. So for example, again, 11 o'clock, I've got my 12 o'clock, my 11 o'clock, 20 meters. I found my fish, I pointed out to it, I make a cast, I'm down on the water right away, and now I'm stripping about a foot and trying to make that shrimp look like it's going and stopping. Strip, strip, and I'm listening to my guide behind me too. And if my guide says, strip faster, stop, stop, strip, strip, I'm trying to listen in the back of my ear and imitate it. If you don't see the fish, oftentimes the guide does. And the guide is seeing how the fish is reacting to the fly. If you listen to the guide well, typically then you can also imitate that. Now, when the fish does eat it, maybe you'll hear the guide say, he's got it, he's got it. Now, I know that I come from trout fishing, and when a fish eats the fly, the first thing I want to do is lift the rod, right? Well, you will not likely hook fish if that's the case. Instead, when the guide says, strip, strip, you got it. Okay, you can see how my line's gone tight, right? I have now set the hook on that fish. He starts to run, and then I bend my rod. Now I've got the fish on. I'm going to continually apply pressure, apply pressure, apply pressure. If that fish goes to run, though, I want to let go of the line and make sure it's clear. One of the things that happens is saltwater fish, something that we're not used to, they can run so fast that when they run, all of this line will wrap up around the reel because it can pop. So by keeping my hand wide, that fish is typically gonna get to your, get to your line. I'm gonna just let it slide, 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 until I'm all the way to the reel. Once it hits the reel, one person told me one time, when a fish runs, what do you wanna do? You wanna let it run. You can't stop a running fish. So hopefully your drag's set properly, which is another thing that I may ask the guide in the morning. Hey, does this seem good? And he may ask to see the reel, pull a little out to feel the tension of what you're gonna to wanna to have for, a, for the proper species that you're chasing. Once that's set properly and the fish is on the reel running, I wanna let that fish run until the run is over. Once the run is over, I am now gonna steady my rod and I'm gonna reel without bouncing my rod. I don't wanna bounce my rod when I'm reeling because that's a chance to lose the fish. So typically, I'm gonna, if, if, if it doesn't take all the line out, then I'm gonna hold the line like so and I'm gonna reel the line in steady, steady, steady until I'm all the way on the reel. In this instance, I don't have a fish on, so I didn't pull my line out. Once I'm on the reel now, I'm gonna wait and feel if the fish runs, clear your hand. This is what we call a knuckle buster. If that fish runs and you have your hand in here, two things can happen. One is that can come around and hit your knuckles, or the second it can come around and hit your knuckles and it breaks the fish off. Once the fish is done running, again, I'm using my butt of my rod to put it in my stomach, the boat and once we're right by the boat typically your guide will then assist you in landing the fish we hope these pointers are good for you this is something you should review prior to your saltwater trip as many of these will create a more successful week for you and your fishing guide remember communication in the boat and working with your guide as a team is number one we wish you the best on your next saltwater journey